So, you have some DNA that you want to make copies of. Sure, you could use PCR, but wouldn't it be way cooler to use bacteria as factories to make more DNA for you? Today, I'll show you everything I know about E. coli transformations. Welcome to DIY Biotech. I'm exaggerating here a bit. E. coli is very good at propagating a specific type of DNA called plasmids. Plasmids are circular pieces of DNA that contain a particular instruction for one or more host organism. If you need a bunch of linear DNA, PCR is usually the best option. However, if you're doing any kind of cloning to build plasmids like Gibson assembly or ligation, you typically transform your final reaction mix into E. coli to propagate your plasmid. E. coli is incredibly easy to transform, grows rapidly, and produces a lot of easy to harvest plasmids. As a side note, transformation here just means putting some DNA in a host organism that doesn't normally carry that DNA. Furthermore, you may be using E. coli for more than just a plasmid factory. Some labs use E. coli to produce proteins or chemicals with genes carried on plasmids. As with any microbial transformation, there are two broad categories, chemical and electrical transformations. Chemical transformations use chemicals like lithium acetate and physical methods like heat shock to make cell membranes more permeable and allow DNA to enter. Electrical transformations utilize a special cuvette and an electroporator to briefly pass a high voltage through a solution of DNA in cells. The high voltage allows the DNA to pass into the cells. Chemical transformations can be a bit easier, but typically electrical transformations are more efficient. Both methods require creation of competent cells, but today we'll assume that you've purchased or made competent cells already. They'll be sold as chemically competent or electrocompetent cells. Today, we'll focus on chemical transformation. In my lab, we make our own chemically competent cells once or twice a year and store them in our minus 80 freezer. Our top 10 strain of chemically competent cells have a very similar transformation procedure to some commercially available ones linked in the description. First, I'll remove a tube containing about 100 microliters of cells from the freezer and allow them to thaw on ice. This takes about 20 minutes. Then, I add 1 to 100 nanograms of plasmid DNA. If I'm simply propagating a plasmid, 10 nanograms is plenty, but if I'm finishing a ligation or Gibson assembly experiment, 100 nanograms usually works best. I try to add this DNA in a volume of 100 microliters or less. Sometimes I'll add the DNA just before the cells thaw. It's recommended to be very careful with these thawed competent cells, so don't pipe up, at, up and down and don't shake or vortex the tube. Simply flick the tube gently about three times after adding the DNA. Allow the tube to sit on ice for 20 more minutes. Heat shock the cells by putting the tube in a 42 degree C heat block for one and a half minutes and then on ice for about two minutes. Now, heat transfer is essential here so use a water bath or add a little bit of water to the heat block and make sure the ice is touching all sides of the tube when the tube is on ice. Remove the tube from the ice and add one milliliter of LB media. Allow the cells to recover for 45 minutes at 37 degrees C. Then you can plate your cells on selective media. Typically, I plate 100 microliters of this solution if I'm propagating a plasmid or I spin the cells at 4000 G for one minute, pour off most of the supernatant resuspend in about 100 microliters, and then plate if I'm doing a ligation or Gibson assembly. The plates need at least 16 hours for colonies to appear. If you grow the plates too long, satellite colonies will form around the true colonies. These satellite colonies don't contain your plasmid. They're sort of hitching a ride with your target colony. When I'm propagating plasmids and I only plate 100 microliters of the original solution, I usually get about 100 colonies. If I'm doing a ligation or Gibson assembly, I get about 10 colonies on average if I plate all of the cells. From here, I can confirm some colonies with colony PCR, or I can use a colony to inoculate two milliliters of selective liquid media. I grow this media 16 to 22 hours, then use a mini prep kit to harvest the plasmids. I typically get about 100 to 500 nanograms per microliter when I elute in 40 microliters of water. That's it. 
That's how you use E. coli as many factories to make more DNA for you. What's wild is most labs do these protocols a little bit differently. So if you do this procedure on a regular basis, please share your protocol or anything you'd add in the comments below. If you're learning, take a look through the comments and the description for more information. Leave any questions you have and I'll try my best to answer them.